All right, everybody, we're gonna do genetics in five minutes or less, so stick with me and let's see if we can get it done. Genes control which proteins are made. Now, genes only make proteins if they are expressed. So think of it like a light switch. If the light switch is turned on in the DNA, the gene is expressed. If it's in the off position, the gene is not expressed and the protein does not get made. So let's talk about when the gene is expressed. The gene that is expressed gets transcribed into messenger RNA. That happens in the nucleus. And then it gets translated to make the protein. This happens in the ribosome. So when transcription happens in the nucleus, what we do is we open up the DNA into a transcription bubble, and we see one strand of DNA that gets copied into messenger RNA. Now, the way this happens is G pairs with C, C pairs with G. This is a lot like DNA replication so far, but the key difference is T pairs with A on the messenger RNA and A pairs with U this time because there is no T in messenger RNA. Now, when we translate that messenger RNA in the ribosome to make amino acids, the building block of proteins, we do that by translating those codons. So let's pretend that we have a codon like GGA. If you're looking at a codon chart like this, you look at the middle and you work your way out, GGA, and you get the amino acid glycine. That is how you work this codon chart when you're trying to translate the mRNA into amino acids. When you reach a stop codon, you would stop translating and that protein is now done. So mutations, what do they look like? So the top is a normal strand of DNA and mutations can happen and sometimes they're bad, sometimes they're not so bad, sometimes they're devastating. When you change a single base within the DNA that is actually called a substitution mutation, you could actually take out a piece of the DNA and that's called a deletion mutation, or you could put something in that wasn't there before and that's called an insertion mutation. Now, some of these mutations may completely change the protein that's made. Some of them may not change it at all. So they're not all bad. So genes control which proteins are made. So where do my genes come from? Well, you get one copy of your genes from your mom and you get one copy from your dad. All of my cells have two copies of each gene but how does the body make sperm and egg cells that only have one copy? If all of my cells have two copies of each, how do I get those cells that have one copy of each? Well, happens to the process of meiosis. It sounds a lot like mitosis, so stay with me. Mitosis is the division of a cell to make an identical copy. Meiosis is two divisions to make four total cells. So you're gonna divide once and make two cells, and then you're going to divide again with prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, a lot like mitosis, but in the end, you end up with four sperm or egg cells that have one copy of each gene by the end of this division. So each copy of a gene is called an allele. So we'll make sure we're speaking the same language here. So how do you figure out which alleles get expressed? If I inherit brown eyes from one parent, blue eyes from another parent, how do we determine which allele gets expressed? Well, let's suppose we have plants. Mendel liked to use plants a lot in his experiments. So let's say you have a plant with yellow seed pods and that is crossed with a plant that has green seed pods. Yellow seeds were often recessive to green seeds. So you'd expect to see more green seeds than yellow. So what you'd have to do here is you'd have to make a Punnett square. So the yellow seed pod is at the top. The green seed pod is on the left-hand side. Now the green seed pod parent has a capital G, meaning it has that dominant allele for green. It also happens to have a lowercase g, which is the recessive allele for yellow. But since green is dominant over yellow, the pods are green. So that parent can give either a big G or a little g. On the top, we have that yellow seed pod. It's got two recessive copies of the yellow gene there. So you see two lowercase g's in place there. So all we have to do is pair up the squares as you see and then you get the results in the middle. Now, the probabilities that you're looking at here, I could ask you, what's the probability that you get a plant that has a green pod? Well, you count one, two out of the four. What's the probability that you get a yellow pod? Again, two out of four. There's also the terms like homozygous recessive. That means two lowercase letters. That's two out of four. What's the possibility that these parents give you a homozygous dominant? That would be zero out of four because I don't see any squares that have two capital G's. And then what's the uh, percentage or the fraction of those that are heterozygous? That means a big G and a little G. Well, that again is two out of four. 
And that's how you do Punnett squares. And that was genetics in five minutes or less, I hope.